So I'm going to show you how you can use Emacs uh, with the help of some Elisp um, to create a workflow that allows you to uh, write closure macros to refactor your code. So, you know, small ad hoc closure macros um, that can transform your code and become part of your editing workflow. So, say we have a situation like this where you have um, a literal map uh, that uh, has uh, different amount, shows you different amounts for uh, different bank accounts and you've decided that the amount is not enough information for, for each account you, you also want uh, currency information so you need to change your code like this you need to do it for each of those values in the map so this is a situation where uh, probably um, multiple cursors would help but later in the video we'll see uh, we we'll look at the case where multiple cursors are not enough, where the logic is a bit more involved. So in theory, your macro could look a bit like this. Def macro fix x. And you just take the literal. And this macro doesn't need, does not need any quoting because it just returns a, a literal. Uh, closure value. So what you need is uh, some Elisp code that expands uh, closure macros and replaces the contents of the buffer that corresponds to that particular macro with the result of the expansion. In this particular case, for example, you need some code that knows how to macro expand this expression and replace it with a fixed version. So this is a function that uh, performs the actual macro expansion and replaces the code in the buffer with the expanded result. Um, so you can see it's an interactive function, so you can actually call it, and it uses cider to send the uh, last S expression before uh, the cursor to be macro expanded. It's worth noting that we're using macro expand one instead of macro expand all, um, because in most cases, if your expression contains other macros, you don't really want to expand them in place. Um, so you don't really want, want to walk the tree of the whole expression and expand all the macros in, inside. You want to do more of a surface, you know, just do the first step expansion uh, for, for your refactoring. And uh, so, so the rest of the function just goes back one S expression, figures out the bounds of that S expression, deletes it, and uh, replaces uh, the uh, particular uh, position in the buffer with uh, the expanded expression. Uh, and the last command just tries to fix the indentation for you. In order for this function to work, make sure to include the, this require here, side their macro expansion. If we go back to the original code now, you, you can, we can actually try macro expand replace so you can see it goes back to uh, back 1s expression and replaces it with a fixed version you can do it for each one of them so this is already useful but it gets a bit tedious to type fix and macro expand replace for every single value uh, but luckily, Emacs allows us to define keyboard macros to record the keystrokes and then reuse them on all the values. So in order to do this, you press um, go to the beginning of the expression, press F3 um, to start recording the macro. You then start doing your fix by wrapping the expression and typing fix. Then press Ctrl E to go to the end of the line. Macro expand replace. Press Enter. Press F4 to stop recording the macro. And now you can go to the beginning of the next value and just simply press F4 to repeat the same thing. Now, because our macro contains a 
go a uh, jump to end to the end of the line. It wouldn't work on this because it would jump to the end of this line here, and then it would destroy um, the the top level expression. I'm going to try this to actually show you how you have to be careful with this. Um, so, so this is wrong. You can see that it has stopped at the in the middle with the fix being typed. So you I'm going to undo this, put the expression on its own line, and then press F4 on this. The nice thing about keyboard macros is that you can save them as ELISP functions without really having to understand the code that uh, runs the macro. Um, and then you can reuse them across your uh, multiple Emacs sessions. So let's go back to the ELISP code that I was showing you before. Uh, the first thing you have to do in order to be able to save the macro is to call k macro name last macro and let's call it apply macro fix and emacs tells us that we can actually run the command now with control uh, meta x but what we're going to do instead is insert kbd macro and we give it the same name, apply macro fix. And this is now a function uh, that you can reuse if you save this file. And since this is now a normal interactive ELISP function, you can assign it to a keyboard shortcut. So let's do this define key closure mode map. Keyboard and I'll just try F12 in this case. Apply macro fix save evaluate. Oops. Okay. So if we go back to the code and then do a few of those, we should be able to use F12 to actually automatically fix them. Yes. So that means that um, if you have this setup, you can define a macro called fix in any namespace um, in your project, and then you can use it as an ad hoc uh, refactoring macro to edit the rest of your code. So we've seen a simple case, uh, but I'd like to show you a more involved case where the logic of the refactoring, refactoring macro is a bit more advanced. Um, I'm going to show you this example out of one, one of my projects, uh, which is an SVG DSL um, that uses the, the hiccup syntax to represent the SVG. Uh, but at some point I decided to switch to the closure.xml syntax which is a bit more programmer friendly. The hiccup syntax is a bit irregular. Uh, the element of the vector can be an attribute map or not. So that creates a lot of problem and a, a, problems and a lot of conditional code. Um, so in my code, in the actual project, I have uh, lots of uh, hiccup nodes represented like that, like vectors. So the first thing is the tag. Second thing could be the attributes and then you have some other things at the end, uh, some content and at the end, which is optional. So I wrote a macro to re refactor this code into the closure.xml syntax, and the macro looks like this. So you take the node, tag is always the first part of the node, and then there's lots of conditional code to check whether the second uh, position is uh, a map, in which case this is the attributes. Otherwise, um, the content, uh, if it's not a map, is the rest of the node. And then it creates this uh, literal map as well. So tag and maybe the attributes and maybe the content. So the, the macro is there in the, in the namespace. Um, and because we have the keyboard macro of Emacs, we can apply it directly to the code. So you can see it used to be use and then uh, map of attributes I press f12 
and becomes tag use attributes and then the map. Um, you have to be careful how you apply keyboard macros. So, for example, it wouldn't work. Uh, it wouldn't work in this case because the expression is not on its own in the, on the line. So I have to put it on its own line. Then I can safely press F12. Um, if I had done something a bit more uh, sophisticated with my keyboard macro, like uh, instead of doing Control E to jump to the end of the line, I could have used the um, S expression forward command. Uh, it would be a bit safer to apply it to this code macros I've recorded. So line um, circle ellipse rectangle. You see that you know if the map gets a bit too long, you get it on multiple lines. So then you have to fix. Uh, the indentation yourself. Um, what's interesting is that here, for example, we have something that could get macro expanded if we had used macro expand all, which is this function here. But I'll try the macro. You see that you get, because it's macro expand one, you only get the surface transformed. Uh, depending on what transformation you're, you're using, you might want to have macro expand all at some point, but I've found that in most cases you want you only want the surface of the code changed. So that's all. Um, I hope that's useful, and hopefully you'll be able to integrate it into your workflow. Um, I've put links of code snippets in the description of this video. So ping me with any questions if you have. Thanks.